so in this lecture 4 we are going to cover the settlement analysis due to tunnel construction using Plexis 2D software so in this lecture we are going to see how we will be able to construct a shield tunnel in a medium soft soil beneath an existing building so this shield tunnel is going to be constructed by excavating the soil at the front using a TBM or tunnel boring machine and at the same time installing a tunnel lining behind it so overall we are going to see the effect of the buildings and the foundation due to this construction how this construction is going to affect the building and the foundation and uh, how we can calculate the bending moments and shear force in order to design the sh tunnel lining we will be covering in this lecture so our main objective of this lecture is modeling of the tunnel boring process and modeling undrained behavior using undrained options so in this whole lecture we are going to model this geometry and we are going to consider the undrained behavior as you can see uh, the half portion of the tunnel is being considered here we know in case of symmetric in case of symmetry we are able we can consider the half portion so we have done so done the we have so we have done the same thing here here we can see there is an existing building this plate element is representing a building this plate element is representing a building and these two plate elements represents the embedded beam which acts as a pile foundation so in total we are going to consider three layers of uh, four layers of soil starting with clay then sand then deep clay and deep sand so overall our geometry will be starting from 0 0 to in case of x axis it will be starting from 0 to 5 plus 10 plus 20 that means total 35 and in y axis it will be starting from plus 3 to minus 30 so let's start so now starting Plexis 2D software so this window will pop up so let's create a new project defining the title as tunnel construction which is lecture 4 Zero 04 now then pressing ok so from here we can see the project properties also so in this project properties we can we have already title it as tunnel construction lecture 04 then in model section we are going to model it as plane strain model so we are considering here 15 node noted elements now we need to define the geometry in order to do that let's see the geometry first so from our slide we can see that the entire geometry is uh, which is containing the tunnel and the buildings and the pile foundation as well it's starting from zero to and extending towards 5 plus 10 plus 20 which is 35 in total in x axis then it means in x axis it will be starting from 0 to 35 and in y axis it is starting from minus 30 the minimum value is minus 30 and the maximum is plus 3 so defining all this geometry in geom contour section so x minimum will be 0 it will be extended up to 35 and y minimum will be minus 
thirty to plus three. So other parameters or units will be remained unchanged. So hitting next and then OK. Now what we need to do is that we need to create the boreholes first. So starting with the boreholes. So we need to create a borehole from the general tab section. We can select the borehole and clicking on at zero, 0 point we are creating this borehole. So we had seen four layers in total. So adding up four layers first and then defining these layers so uh, soil layers so we have already added four layers now assigning the soil parameters and defining the geometry so the first layer was from plus 3 till minus 10 the second one was minus 10 to minus 12 and minus 12 to minus 17 and so on so let's define the geometry of each layers plus 3 to minus 12 minus 12 to minus 17 uh, plus 3 to minus 10 minus 10 to minus 12 minus 12 to minus 17 and minus 17 to minus 30 now we need to assign the materi materials so in order to do that in this case we are uh, using the global materials or the built-in materials so we had seen that the matri um, soil materials are clay, sand, deep clay and deep sand so using all these materials So clay, taking clay, sand, deep clay and deep sand at last, then pressing OK. So the first one was clay, then was sand, and then it was deep clay and then finally deep sand. Our water head will be at zero, 00 point and then pressing OK button we will get the geometry along with the mat materials assigned in each layer now we will be moving towards our structure so here we are going to create a tunnel section so in order to do that we are going to select create tunnel option and we are going to place this tunnel at 0 minus 17 We are going to select the shape as a circular one and as we are considering just the right half portion of the tunnel, just the right half portion. So we need to define the section as well. So define right half and the axis will be starting from 0 to minus 2.5 it was I guess. Let's see our geometry. So in the structure just create tunnel 017 we are placing a tunnel at 0 minus 17 and then we are starting the setting the axis from 62 to minus 2.5 so 0 to minus 2.5 will be our axis so starting will be 0 and it will be up to minus 2.5 was it minus 2.5 or 2.5 so it was minus 2.5 and then we need to proceed towards segment tab and in segment tab we need to define the we need to define the radius 2.5 meter So moving towards segment tab in this segment clicking on this segment section 
we are going to define the radius as 2.5 and then moving towards subsection we are not going to make any changes here but moving towards properties and then pressing the slice segments here we can see this is a half circle portion now we need to define it as a plate and the plate will be working as a lining so in order to do that we need to create the materials first so proceeding towards the material which was in our so proceeding towards the material we can see in soil material we need to define lining so for and this lining is working as a plat so selecting lining and uh, as we know that we are going to create a building beneath which the tunnel will be constructed so we are taking this building materials also and moreover we are going to create piles so taking this material at the same time so this was all then pressing ok so in total we have created these materials plates for plates we have create as plates we have created building and lining and as soil and interfaces we have taken these four materials and as embedded beam we have taken piles so these are all our materials now we are going to assign this material in our we are going to create this structure and assign those materials so let's see how we are going to do this So we have already moved shift towards properties segment properties section S so we have already defined this segment now we will be defining the linings and the negative interface and the cons uh, contraction line as well so let's do these things So moving towards the properties tab, right clicking on this segment, just right clicking on this segment, we are creating the lining first. Uh, this lining will be acting as a plate element. So creating creating a plate and then assigning this material here. So this plate is actually the lining. So we are assigning the lining and then we will have to do the same thing once again for negative interface now we are creating the negative interface so create negative interface and now we will be pressing once again to create the cost contraction line create line contraction so in case of line contraction we need to define the percentage of contra contraction so in this case we are defining it as 0.5 percent which is c refer which is expressed as c reference 5 so 0 0.5 percent and now we will generate this tunnel then close so we have already generated this tunnel So, as we are going to construct this tunnel beneath a foundation and a building, so we need to define the buildings and the foundation, or it is actually a pile foundation. So, defining the building as a stiff plate and the piles as embedded beam rows. So, we are going to define these things. So, we need to draw a plate from 5.3 to 15.3 which will represent the building and the piles two piles will be 5 3 to 5 minus 11 and from 15 3 to 15 minus 11 
this two will represent the two piles which will act as an embedded uh, which we will define as a embedded beam row so let's define these materials we have already taken these materials from the global materials section now let's construct these things so we are drawing a plat element so create create plat create plat so selecting this create line selecting this create line option from the tab general tab we will be selecting create plate option so we are going to create this plate at 5,3 which is around so this is actually at 5,03 actually we can write the command here which is 5,3 or we can also select the points so 5,3 is exactly here let's zoom it first so this is the starting starting 5,3 and it will be ending at 15,3 so 15,3 so in this way we are defining the building now we will be defining the we will be creating the piles so these piles will be creating as a embedded beam row so now we have already already defined the mat plate as the building material now wha what we need to do is that we need to create the two piles so in order to create these two piles we need to select create line option for the first pile starting from 53 and extending it up to 511 5 minus 11 so we have created the line now we need to define it as embedded beam row so after defining it as embedded beam row we need to assign the material so this material will be piles that we have already selected earlier so we have we are done with the first pile so we have we'll have to do the same thing for the second pile as well selecting the create line option starting from 15.3 and extending up to 15 minus 11 now defining the material as embedded beam row and then assigning the material also in this way we have we are creating this structure now if we want we can also define a line load here upon the plate which will represent the loads from the building so in order to do that we need to select create line load starting from this point and ending here now defining the line load amount so this line load is selected we have already selected this one we are assigning the value of line load as minus 5 kN per meter as it is acting downward in downward so now we are done with the structures now we need to generate the mesh so hitting the mesh button from the main tab and then clicking on generate mesh option so we are considering the element distribution as medium one so pressing ok the mesh will be created if we want to see the generated mesh then click on view mesh option so this will be our output and from here we can zoom in and zoom out as well as I have already done it previously so we can see here the we can see here see here the fixities in the boundaries so this fixities mainly this is the fixities in three direction in three sides in right left left right and in bottom portion we can see the fixities this fixities generally restricts the movement of water so as we are considering the undrained portion or undrained option so 
we have applied the fixities how we can apply these fixities just clicking on geometry and selecting these fixities so in my case this is already been selected so I'm unselecting it so now we can see there is no fixities so if we want to select this fixities clicking on fixities the fixities will be created now then pressing close button now we need to move towards the stage construction option so here we need to define five phases in total actually six phases with the initial one so starting with the initial phase in initial phase each and everything is going to remain unchanged we are going to select the calculation type as K0 procedure loading type as stage construction and we are going to calculate the pore water pressure from ferritic level now pressing ok so in initial phase nothing is going to be activated or the um, activated so as I have mentioned earlier we need to create another five phases so starting with the first phase or phase one so in this phase one portion so what we need to do is that we need to select the building and the pile foundation so if we see the phases if we see the phases we can see here that at phase one at phase one what we have done so at phase one which is the first calculation phase so in this phase one we are selecting the ignore undrained behavior option and we are also activating the plate and the foundation piles that means the building and the foundation piles so let's do this two things in phase one so in phase one we are selecting it as calculation type plastic stretch stage construction in phase one we are ignoring the undrained behavior and then pressing ok now creating the second phase in phase 2 which is going to start from the first phase so the calculation type will be plastic as well loading type will be stage construction and in phase 2 we are resetting the displacement to 0 that means here we are going to construct our tunnel and for this case we are resetting our displacement or strain to zero and hitting ok but in phase one in phase one we have already constructed this line load and these two pile foundations and the plate the plate as well so selecting the, the so activating all these things all these things activating the piles in phase one what we have skipped in phase one so in phase one we are activating the piles activating the plate and the line load as well and in phase 2 we are resetting the displacement to 0 and then we are excav excavating the tunnel so in order to excavate the tunnel we need to select the two cluster of the soil and then deactivate it so we are deactivating the first cluster and then deactivating the second cluster 
so we have deactivated the cluster so here we can see uh, this portion is empty that indicates that we have constructed or we have done the excavation of the tunnel and at the same time we are creating the lining and negative interfaces so we need to activate the negative interface we need to activate the lining also so activating both the lining and the negative interface so for negative interface activating the negative interface and then activating the second portion's negative interface so we have activated the interface we can see here the tick sign in interface portion and then also in plate we are activating the linings as well so this plate is mainly the lining one so this plate is building and the first plate was lining so we have selected these two linings and now we have activated the V-links as well activating the activated the V-links as well let's check the phase 1 also so in case of phase 1 we have just activated the plate embedded beams that means the pile foundations but not the but not the excavation or the linings or the tun uh, or the negative interfaces but in phase 2 we are excavating the tunnel th that means deactivating the soil cluster and then activating the plate 1 that means the linings and plate 2 as well plate, plate 2 is our foundation activating the line loads in phase 2 also it will remain activated as it is being continued from the first phase so in phase 2 we are activating the two pile foundations we are activating the line load we are activating the plate which is acting as a building we are deactivating the soil cluster that means we are excavating the soil inside from inside the tunnel and then we are activating the tunnel linings which are in plate 1 so we are active we have activated plate 1 1 and plate 1 2 which are which means activating the linings and also we are activating the negative interface we can see here the interface interface we have activated the negative interface as well so in this way we are done with phase 2 now creating another phase so before that in phase 2 in case of tunnel construction in both of the soil clusters we need to select the water condition as dry as because as we have deactivated these two portion that means the first one this this portion and also this this one we have deactivated deactivated these two things so as we are excavating some pore water pressure might develop so in order to avoid that we are considering the dry condition so that no water exists so we are selecting this as water condition as dry and similarly also this water condition as dry now we are done with the phase 2 in phase 3 what we need to do in phase 3 is the contraction phase in this contraction phase in addition to the installation of the tunnel lining and the excavation and the dewatering of the tunnel the volume loss is simulated by applying a contraction to the tunnel lining that it that means when we're constructing the tunnel we need not to excavate the same diameter that we want for our tunnel we need to excavate some extra amount or some extra amount 
so as because always in case of tunnel construction the volume gets contracted after the excavation so considering these things or considering this factor we need to consider the contraction as well so, so in phase 3 we are activating the line contraction line const line contraction but in phase 2 we sh should deactivate the line contraction we will we'll not be activating the line contraction in phase 2 so deactivating it in phase 2 and then activating it in phase 3 so in phase 3 we are activating the line contraction so in phase 3 others remain unchanged just we are activating the line contraction in phase 3 so in phase 3 we are activating in phase 3 so in phase 3 we are activating the line contraction in phase 3 we are activating the line contraction so that means our tunnel will be able to contract in phase 3 now in phase 4 in phase 4 what you need to do um, in phase 4 we are going to consider the effect of the foundation so in this case phases window do not select the reset displacement to zero and in this phase also so now we are done with the phase 3 portion now creating another phase which is phase 4 and the last one will be phase 5 so in phase 4 in phase 4 it will remain unchanged that means it will be starting from phase 3 the calculation time type will be plastic and loading type will be stage construction considering the pore water pressure calculation from the ferritic level and unchecking the reset displacement to zero box okay so what we need to do what we are going to do in phase 4 is that uh, we need to apply grouting so in order to simulate this process or uh, in order to perform this process what we need to do is that we need to we need to apply a pressure in this soil so in the soil cluster we are going to apply a pressure before that we need to deactivate the tunnel linings and the negative interfaces and line const line const contractions as well so firstly deactivating the tunnel linings so we have deactivated the plate that means tunnel lining we are deactivating the line uh, we are deactivating the line contractions and also the interface so we have deactivated all these three things and now we are going to apply in these two we are going to apply pressure in these two soil clusters so in this first soil cluster we are going to select the soil cluster and we are going to select the water condition as user defined and in this user defined section we need to apply the pressure that means here we are suppose here we are applying minus 230 kilonewton per meter square pressure so in this way we have applied in first cluster and in second cluster we are doing the same thing once again that means applying a pro pressure and this pressure will be uh, firstly selecting the water condition as user defined and then applying the pressure p reference as minus 230 so we have already applied the pressure in case of phase 4 now in phase 5 or the final phase in phase in phase 5 we need to activate 
we need to do, uh, these things will be will remain unchanged or same as the previous one as like as the phase 4 in this phase we are going to activate the tunnel linings once again that means we are activating the split tunnel linings and activating the interfaces so we are doing these things in phase 4 so let's check what we need to do in phase 5 uh, phase 5 this is the phase 5 or the final phase so in phase 5 we need to inside the tunnel we need to set the water condition as dry that means in two clusters we need to set the water condition as dry and activate the tunnel lining we have done activating the done with the activating with uh, activating tunnel linings and the negative interfaces in the tunnel so we have done these two things and lastly we need to select the points where we would like to calculate the stress strains and also the displacements so in phase 5 what we have done we have activated the tunnel linings that means plate 1 and also the negative interface or interface we are selected the interface S and also we need to do for both cluster for both soil cluster so uh, for first soil cluster we are setting the water condition as dry and same similarly for second soil cluster we are setting the water condition as dry dry so in this way we are done with the phase 5 also now we need to select some points for our calculation purposes so selecting points clicking on the select points the output output window will pop up so here we can see that um, we need to select some points L suppose we need to we are going to calculate the stress strains just at upper side of the tunnel that means we are selecting a point around here node 7185 and then another node just beneath the pile foundation suppose here 7682 just updating the mesh so we have selected the points now we are need to run the calculation so hitting on the calculation button the calculation will proceed so it's on first phase the first phase calculation it's completed so the phase 2 has also been completed phase 3 it's continuing Similarly, in case of phase four, and in case of four, phase four, the calculation is running, and it is the final phase. In final phase, um, so none of the phase has failed. Let's check how what will be the result. In order to see the result, we need to view calculation result. We need to click on the view calculation result option so clicking on that this window will output window will pop up so here we can see the foundation has been or the um, building has been settled down to a value of 0 0.05716 node 6128 this is the maximum value value so now if we want to see that how much displacement has occurred in this building it is 0 0.02857 meter so this building has settled down 0 0.02857 meter due to this construction of tunnel if we see if we want to see the other faces as well then we can see uh, at first phase it was almost clear in it, it, it is the phase 2 now if we want to see the deformations or the other calculations so pressing on the view calculation results once again 
if we want to see the deformations that means total displacements del u here we can see the total displacement the maximum amount of displacement will be 0 0.05702 which is occurring around just in the upper portion of the tunnel so here we can see the effect how the effect is changing here is the maximum and here will be the minimum as it is around the boundary so the maximum one is just at upper portion of the tunnel if you want to see the shaded lines here is the result the maximum deformation value is showing here the maximum displacement value displacement value is shown here and if we want to see the stresses we can see the stresses from here we can see the deformations now if we want to see the shear force and bending moment of the tunnel we can see that before that if we want to see uh, how much the pile has been displaced we can click on the pile and see that the uh, displacement of the pile is 0 0.02947 meter for the first pile and for second pile this displacement value we need to see these things so closing it and selecting the output one once again now if we want to see the here we can see the deformed mesh that means our tunnel was initially this one but after construction it has deformed or it has contracted in the final phase but in phase 2 we can see this is the case of phase 2 this is the case of phase 3 and this is the case of phase 4 and here is the f final phase which is phase 5 now if we want to see the bending moment and shear force diagram uh, oh, with which we can design the tunnel lining so if we want to design the tunnel lining we will be required to know the uh, bending moment and shear force for this tunnel so clicking on the tunnel lining clicking on the tunnel lining we are clicking on tunnel lining and then we can see here the distribution of displacements so if we want to see the bending moment then clicking on force section clicking on force here you can see the axial force here is the distribution of the axial force so this is the axial force diagram so the maximum value of the axial force is minus 579 and minimum value is minus 603.2 which is these two are compressive forces and if we want to see the shear force here's the distribution of the shear force for phase 5 so if we want to see for other phases we can also see that this is for phase 2 and this is for phase 4 and this is for phase 5 so for phase 5 it is 6.24 and minimum value is minus 5.486 now in case of bending moment with which we can design the lining we know that in order to design the reinforced concrete we need to we are required to know the bending moment and using the value of the bending moment we will be able to design the rcc or reinforced concrete so here is the result of the bending moment for this tunnel so using this bending moment we can easily design the lining of the tunnel so for phase 5 the maximum value of the moment is 5.237 kilonewton per meter uh, kilonewton meter per meter which is the positive moment and the value of maximum minimum moment is minus 10.34 minimum moment is denoting the moment is negative moment so actually the highest value of the moment is minus 10.34 here and for phase 2 it is 78.71 which is the highest so we need to design these things using the highest moment value 
we need to check for each of the faces and uh, you with the highest amount of moment we need to draw the we need to design the lining so here we can see the li um, moment is highest at uh, at the value quanti uh, having the value of 78.71 kilonewton meter per meter and numerically the highest value is 83.32 kilonewton meter per meter so using these values we will be designing our lining so and this is our bending moment diagram so this is our bending moment diagram of the tunnel if we want then we can also export it as well and create our mm, create our report for this project so in this way we can see any of the diagrams we can see the total displacements we can see the forces we can see the um, uh, stresses we can see the bending moments so so in this way we will be concluding our tunnel project thank you